good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel and today we're going to talk about an engine overhaul. What kind of overhaul? What do you mean there's more than one kind of overhaul? So stay tuned while we discuss all the details of what makes up an overhaul for an engine these days. So we would like to ask you please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. So stop and consider this. You have two basic choices for an overhaul. There's the top overhaul where you replace all the cylinders and then there's the full overhaul where you split the case and you go after all the things. Sometimes what Ken would call the full meal deal. But consider this for a minute. Most new engines, now here's the fact to consider. Most new engines make it to TBO if they are operated per the manufacturer's recommendation. And the reason why they reach TBO is because the manufacturer themselves has spent thousands of hours and millions of dollars to arrive at a best combination, a juggling of parts and assembly procedures to deliver you the power, the reliability, the fuel efficiency, and the longevity that's demanded by aircraft owner and operators. So that's why you get a new engine from the manufacturer. Now here's another consideration for you. When it's time for an overhaul, stick with, got your, with your engine safely and reliably TPO the first time. New limits. Now, I started flying back in 91 and I did mine with, I replaced cylinders, I finally did a top overhaul on the Tiger, I did work on the Traveler, I upgraded to 160 horsepower. But it took me a while before I finally realized that getting a new limit engine and having that installed on the airplane, then it would run to TBO. I did that on my Traveler. <laughs> Next thing I knew, I had 2,400 hours on that engine. Same thing with the Tiger. New engine in the Tiger, 2,100 hours later, it's still running just fine, no changes. So a new limit engine is what I recommend. So there's a lot of terms that are thrown around when it comes to engine overhauls. You've seen top overhaul, you've seen new limit, service limit, recondition. There's a myriad of terms out there and let's talk about what each one of the four major categories mean. Okay, there are four categories of overhaul. There's a service limit overhaul, there's a new limit overhaul, there's a factory overhaul back to zero time, and there's a field overhaul by a local AMP. Now let's talk about what each one of those four really mean in the real world today. By the way, a service limit overhaul, a new limit overhaul, they're not in order of price that we're discussing, but a manufacturer determines what are service limits. And so that means that if an engine's being overhauled to service limits and you're at 90% of wear on a part, it's still within service limits, it'll go back in. And that's why a service limit overhaul is not as longevity, doesn't have as much longevity as a new limit overhaul. Something to keep in mind. Now let's talk about the new limit overhaul. Well, just like with the service limit overhaul, a new limit overhaul has new limits set by the manufacturer. Now, they also have procedures that go along with that. The one we're running up against with the Project Tiger is we have a brand new, zero time, never been used new engine that has a total of six minutes of runtime. When they crack the case for the teardown inspection, we have to replace the bearings because you have to replace the main bearings could be called an overhaul. So those are little catches. So when you're examining what's going to go into your engine, make sure you're understanding what the shop is providing you for your money. Now the factory you build is the only people, the factory or a facility designated by the manufacturer can zero time an engine. And the reason why zero timing is so critical to people, they think that it means zero time literally. But that engine case could have 7,000 hours. That could be a 10,000 hour crankshaft. It could be a 5,000 hour camshaft. It could be tappet bodies with 2,500 first run. You don't know. So when they put that component of parts together and call it an engine, they give it a zero time because it's the only thing that really makes sense. But don't ever assume that a zero time engine is the same as a new engine. And then your final choice is to have a field overhaul done by a local A&P. They're going to get the direct drive like homing manual. They're going to assemble the engine, send all the parts out, collect all the maintenance release tags, bind it together, put it together as an engine, and sign it off under their AMP rating. That's what I did on my Tiger engine in one of them. I couldn't get an engine done by the shop. They wanted $1,500 just to sign off the engine. So I went and got my AMP, put it together myself, signed it off myself. So there you go. That's your fourth option. Have a local AMP do your engine for you. 
So when you're shopping for an overhaul, don't fall into the quality game trap. A lot of companies want to tell you, oh, we can do this and we can do that and we can do the other and we can make you a super duper version of our engine. Nobody else can touch it. And and people fall into that thinking that if it costs more, it must be better. Now, that being said, that when I order an engine from Lycon, I do buy a couple of the options. We do get the diamond hardening on the tappet bodies, on the cam lobes, as well as we get the O-ring replacements for the string between the cases so that we know that the engine cases will never leak. But those are the options that we personally like. So be careful you understand the quality game when you order your engine. So again, you know what you are getting for your airplane for the money that you are paying. And one final thing to consider on your overhaul, are they just going to assemble your engine, gasket it up, paint it, and deliver it back? Or are they going to put it together with all the components? It's going to go on an engine test stand, and you're going to start for an hour or two, get all the components run in while they check for oil leaks, oil pressure, and other items to make sure that the engine's been properly assembled. And a test ran run uh, on a test stand is always nice to have as part of the engine and what we're doing on the Project Tiger. We are going to have about two hours of runtime when we get the engine back from its teardown inspection. So there's a lot to understanding about an overhaul for your engine. I will say this about getting a good overhaul. When we put Luann's Engagement Yankee up for sale, we had about three people call the first day. The second guy asked about the engine overhaul. We told him it was a Lycon port and polished engine overhaul. He bought the airplane sight on scene because Lycon had done the work on the engine. So there's a lot of things you need to understand about your overhaul. Choose the one that's right for you. I recommend that you get a new limit overhaul by a quality shop, uh, Manituck, Signature, uh, Lycon would all be good things as well as getting a Lycoming engine if you want from Lycoming. But anyway, there's a lot to understand. We hope we explained it a bit for you. We hope you found it all useful and informative. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day flying your Grumman. And in addition, there's a little treat about 3 o'clock in the morning when I'm doing web work and other stuff. Here's my cat coming down, playing with a mouse and meowing and just having a good time with me in the wee hours of the night. So I thought I'd throw this into you as a little treat. Y'all please enjoy.